Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. It is that time of year again. We have Valentine's Day coming right up around the corner. So in honor of that special day, I've created this look today that is perfect for the occasion. And I'm doing this all in partnership with Elemis. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm to cleanse and prep our model's skin. I start out by applying this to the general areas of the face before I really start to massage it in. If you've been with me for a while here on YouTube, you've seen me use this product time and time again. It's one of my favorite skincare products of all time, which is funny because when I first started posting tutorials on my channel, I would never really show this step in the makeup routine because I don't know. I figured it's a makeup tutorial. Who cares about this step? But when I started getting asked how the model skin would be looking so fresh before I even began applying the makeup, I knew I had to start showing this first step because it really makes an incredible difference, not just in how your skin feels, but also how the makeup turns out at the end. And because it's a cleansing balm, it's not going to strip your skin of its natural oils and leave it feeling dehydrated. You know what I mean? It transforms into three different textures as I use it. So first, I use it as is to nourish the skin as a balm and then break down any makeup or dirt as a cleansing oil. Once I have have it well massaged into the skin, I add a little water to my fingertips, which is what you're seeing here now, and it transforms this into a, um, like a, like a cleansing milk. So the consistency of it changes a bit by adding in that water to it. And then I just take a warm face cloth and wipe it all off. Now the cleansing balm I'm using here is their original one. So there is a fragrance to it, which I absolutely love. And that's saying a lot, you know, coming from me because I'm not a fan of fragrances in my skincare most of the time, to be honest, but but the smell of this one is so addicting. The, the combination of the eucalyptus and the chamomile and the lavender smells so luxurious. It makes it feel like I'm at a spa. In fact, the first thing a client says when I use this on them is, wow, you know, this smells so good. But if you don't like fragrances, that's completely fine. They have this same cleansing balm that's completely free of any fragrance. They call it their Naked Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I'll link both of them down below so you know you have options and you decide what's best for you. But without a doubt, I 100% recommend you try this if you're looking for a quality cleansing balm. It's my absolute favorite one out there. And, um, and yeah, just trust me on this one. Once you try it, it'll all make a little bit more sense and you'll understand my up session with this but anyways now that the skin is completely cleansed i'm going to use this elemis superfood facial oil to further prep and hydrate miranda's skin i pour only two drops of this into the palms of my hands and then lightly press it into the skin now elemis was nice enough to give us 25 percent off their products with a code spencer25 i'll link those details down below but with that said Another Elemis product besides that cleansing balm that I use that I really love is this facial oil. As the name suggests, it's formulated with a variety of superfood oils that leave your skin not just, um, you know, not just radiant and plump, but really smooth feeling. And I know oils can be a little scary to some people. Trust me, I get it. But this doesn't have that same consistency of, let's say, um, like an olive oil, you know, it's it's much much lighter than that. It's a thinner consistency that gets absorbed into the skin, meaning it doesn't look or feel greasy at all. So. Moving along, we have the skin fully prepped, and now we can head over to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation in the shade 7 Warm, and I'm applying this on with a makeup sponge. I'm using this shade here because Miranda has her body spray tanned, and this will match up her face to her chest and arms perfectly. What I do love about this foundation is that a little goes a long way. All you need for the face is, you know, maybe two pumps of this, which will give you more than enough coverage. It's a natural matte finish, but in saying that, I highly recommend you prep your skin well before using this. If you have normal to dry skin, take a couple extra minutes applying your moisturizers or serums or facial oils or whatever it is that you use to hydrate your skin. Better yet, you can take uh, that cleansing balm I just used. You can leave it on your skin for 10 minutes and then wipe it off because this foundation really does look best 
on fully moisturized skin. Well, I, I guess all foundations kind of do, but <laughs> this one specifically, trust me. Okay, now that we have this applied, I'm using the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick to add some light dimension to her face, applying it with a blush brush to the cheekbones, around the perimeter of the forehead, and a slight a bit around the nose. And then I head back to my makeup sponge to further blend and diffuse it out. I'm not going in with a real strong contour today. I want to keep the complexion soft and... Um, you know, just pretty. It's Valentine's Day. I don't want anything looking too intense. Even up close in person, I want the skin to look fresh and flawless, which it does turn out looking like that at the end. I'll even include some real, <laughs> real close-up shots of the skin at the end in the outro footage. I want you to see exactly how the skin looks in real life. Yes, of course, you can tell, you know, there's makeup. You know, we're not doing a no makeup makeup look here, but even with all the products I use, the skin doesn't look cakey or overdone it just turns out really really beautiful and we owe all of that not just to the blending but also how we prepped the skin with the skincare products we used earlier Next up, for concealer, I'm using the Jouer Essentials High Coverage Concealer in the shade Lace to conceal and brighten around the eyes. I'm more so placing this in that inner lower corner region of the eyes and cheeks, and then head back to my sponge to blend this out. This has become my top favorite concealer over the year. I use it almost every time I do my own makeup. It, it, it has incredible coverage, it doesn't crease up, and overall just looks so good. I will say it does dry down quick, so it's not one of those concealers that you want to leave sitting there for a while before blending it out. You're going to want to get to work quickly with the blending, but once it's blended, it's there to stay. You'll see what I mean if you try it, but I'm going to finish up this blend and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now that I'm finishing up with this blend, you're seeing me here take whatever concealer I have left on my sponge and very lightly pressing that along the jawline to highlight and sharpen the contour. To set the makeup into place, I'm using the one size translucent setting powder and applying this on with a powder puff. You can notice that I'm not using a lot of this powder either. In fact, you can't really even see the actual powder. That's how little I'm using, but you'll notice a difference in finish. The skin is becoming more matte and the makeup is becoming locked into place. Okay, so the liquid products are set. So now I'm using the Hula Bronzer by Benefit to further define and complement the cream contour we used earlier. I'm applying this on with a light hand and a very light brush. I think the brush is from, I think the brush is from Morphe, if I'm not mistaken, but it's not too dense, which is great because I don't want to pack on this bronzer. Just a little here and there to emphasize the structure of her face. And I'll apply a smidge of this around the nose as well. No need to switch to another brush for this. This. We're, we're going to keep it simple. And then heading back to the translucent powder here, I'm using this to bake the jawline. Miranda has such beautiful bone structure that I really wanted to complement it by accenting her jawline and cheekbones. And of course, we'll wipe all this powder off towards the end of the tutorial. Continuing the baking, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in the shade Light to make that under eye pop with brightness. If you love a bright under eye like I do, I highly recommend these powders, especially if you're a makeup artist and you're looking for staple products in your kit for all skin tones. This product is fantastic because they're really affordable and they have a variety of shades. Now, I wouldn't use this to, you know, to set the complete face, but I have recently fallen in love with these to bake and brighten in the under eye. It's really, really good. Moving on to brows, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe to lightly fill in and shape Miranda's brows. I don't want them to be too intense, so I'm taking my time with this, but also at the end, I'm styling her bangs down in front of her face, so I do want there to be enough density in the brows so that you can still see them through the hair. The 
The other brow product I'm using today is the Clear Brow Gel from Benefit, and I'm running this through the brow hairs to lock them into place. As I said a moment ago, she'll have her bangs down in front of her face, so this will help prevent the brow hairs from moving around throughout the day. To begin on the eyes, I'm using the same bronzer we had used earlier on the face and brushing that across the complete upper lid. And I'm using a flat edge of a, of a piece of paper to assure that I have a clean line starting from the outer corner of her eye diffused upwards towards the temples. And then once I remove the paper, I can take a step back, see the shape that's coming together, and then decide where I need to go in and diffuse out that bronzer a bit more. And once I've done so, I'll take this along the lower lash line for a slight hint of smokiness. For this Valentine's Day look, I, I wanna keep the eye makeup light and then glam it up a little bit later with some lashes. The next product I'm using is this iconic London glitter crayon in the shade Quartz, popping some of that glitter onto the back of my hands before using an eyeshadow brush to apply this to the center of the lid. I think this is a fun way to glam up your eye makeup, but in a really subtle way, especially for Valentine's Day. It, it, it's simple, but yet still flirty and feminine and fun, and the perfect way to add a little sparkle in your look. Next up, I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara to coat her top lashes with. As I mentioned earlier, I will be adding false lashes today, so getting a generous coat of mascara through her natural lashes will help blend them with the falsies that we apply in a minute. But first, I'm taking this Ofra Verified Liquid Eyeliner Pen and ever so lightly running this along the upper lash line. The false lashes I end up using today have a black band, so tracing along the upper lash line with an eyeliner will help disguise it. And I do end up winging this out just a smidge, nothing too dramatic or over the top, just a little something to complement her beautiful eye shape. The lashes I'm using today are the Style B is back from Tati Lashes. They're dense, they're wispy, and everything I could ever have wanted for today's glam. Once I have this applied, I'm going to use the Too Faced Nude Eyeliner to run through her waterline, which will open up and awaken the eye, especially when we run that Too Faced Mascara through the bottom lashes. Now, fortunately for me, Miranda loves bottom mascara. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Chunky, full, bold bottom lashes. And I know it's not for everybody, so of course, feel free to totally skip this step if you like, but man, it, it just makes such a difference in a good way, or at least I think so. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to complete the other eye off camera and then start wiping away the powder we've been leaving here to bake. You can see it just leaves behind this brightness to the under eye that complements the simple and clean eye makeup look that we created. To blush up the cheeks, I'm using the Soft Pop Powder Blush from Makeup by Mario and dusting this onto the cheeks. This is in the shade Poppy Pink, which is perfect for this occasion. It's soft and feminine and youthful. and kind of gives that doll-like effect. Even if you're someone who doesn't like looking you know, like you're wearing a lot of makeup, at least try a bright pink blush. You can go a little more subtle with the rest of the makeup. You don't have to you know, apply the false lashes like I did, or maybe not go in with as heavy of a powder. But if you're someone who usually doesn't wear blush, for me, try it out, please, at least once. And hopefully I'll have you convinced that blush is where it's at. Okay, moving on, I'm using this Pat McGrath Labs liquid lipstick in the shade Nude Cabaret to trace the borders of her lips. So listen here, I've really been wanting to do this this um, like pale rosy pink lip. And I think I achieved that today with a few lip products I used. I don't want the lips to look overly defined or saturated. I just want a flush of color. But of course, with this eye look, you can really pair any lip color that you like with this, whether it be a peachy nude or a bright red or even a hot pink. But I'm really trying to channel the early 2000s Paris Hilton frosty pink lip. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It was so iconic. So next, I'm taking this liquid lipstick from Wet n Wild in the shade Flirt Alert and placing this in the center of the lips to really start bringing in those pink hues. Also, I should mention, I know a pink lip can be a little intimidating, but a great way to incorporate it is by using a mauve toned lip liner or a nude brown lip liner and then just apply the pink in the center. It gives a softer effect than an all over bright pink lip. 
And lastly, I'm using the e.l.f. Cosmetics Naughty and Ice Lip Gloss in the shade Pink Cosmo to give us that high shine frosty finish. But do you see what I was saying? This is, this is definitely a pink lip, but it's not an in-your-face Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's still approachable, soft, and, and, and wearable. Now that I have the lips completed, I'm heading over to my favorite product in the world, the Plexiglass Illuminator, and I'm using this to highlight her cheekbones. Look at what this does here. Um, <laughs> Spencer, can you move your hand? I mean, come on. If that's not glass skin, I don't know what is. And remember earlier when I was saying that even though, yes, we're using a lot of different products and layering, by the end of the process, her skin still looks fresh. It doesn't look cakey, or at least I don't think so. And that's why I love using plexiglass on top of the makeup. It brings back that healthy shine and luminosity to the skin that we can sometimes lose when we use powders. Alrighty, lastly, I'm using the MAC Fix Plus setting spray to set everything into place, which makes this the final step in how I created this Valentine's Day makeup look on our naturally beautiful model. And there we have it kids, I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.